Welcome everyone to Tabletop Anthologies. So to get started tonight, um, we are doing a little side story here about Professor Martin Baker. Uh, we left Martin Baker last when he was leaving the Butu Manor. So this is the manor uh, where the party of investigators were believed to be safe, back uh, mending all of their wounds. Um, <clears throat> Little known to Martin Baker, the Night Gaunt soon attacked them. But we're joining Baker just before that as he's leaving the manor after he received a mysterious telegram telling him to report to the Miskatonic University's library right away. So, Baker, what's going on with so, you right uh, now? Well, considering that I was one of the few that weren't really wounded during that warehouse raid, I... Uh, Snatched that telegram after I heard my name was on it, read it very quickly, handed it back to um, my fellow professor, and uh, immediately ran out. As I'm as I'm going out, I'm I'm just I'm still kind of confused, uh, not by what was on the message, but by the Butus. Number one, that the, the 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 manor was called Butu Manor, um, and as as um. Uh, I can't remember. It's been it's, we've been we've been away too long. Uh, uh, Doctor Boyle uh, said they they came with the property, and I I'm just I'm still very confused about all of that. And honestly, it is it's more of what's on my mind the entire time that I go um, and make my way back to Miskatonic. Right. It's uh, so, pretty obvious that there's some sort of cult mythos influence there. Um, <clears throat> so you make your way back to the university, no issues at all. It's, it's the middle of the night right now, a cool air going through your window as you're driving to the university and you get there walking across campus, clear night sky above you and the music is cutting in and out. <laughs> so uh, let me check that real quick. Um, <clears throat> so while I'm doing that, yeah, it uh, always Professor, does that. Professor Baker, oh, really? Uh, Professor Baker, you are walking across the university campus, as I said, and approach the Orne Library, which is the Miskatonic University's library. The front of it is, uh, kind of a Victorian touch to it, large oak doors at the front. What do you do? Uh, well, it's the middle of the night. Um, I'm not sure if this campus keeps their library open at all hours. Um, I would check the door. Um, I've been, aside from thinking about the Butus, which honestly, it really cannot get out of my mind. Um, I'd be keeping a watch out. Um, this is, we, we just ran into some very nasty things and um, I'd, I'd keep that in mind as I go. Uh, but after I arrived to the library, I would just give the door a go. All right, and it is open. There's one single light that you can see all the way across the front entrance, this front lobby. You know, there's desks up front where uh, there'd be some attendance and things, and you can see all the book stacks that are available to uh, students and the public. And all the way in the back there is a set of stairs behind these rows of books with a single light there. Dark everywhere else. Is that uh, area anywhere near the restricted section? You know that it leads up, those stairs lead up to the offices, and that is where um, Dr. Henry Armitage's office is. Then that's where we'll head. All right. And for everyone who's tuning in, Dr. Henry Armitage, he is the head librarian at Miskatonic University. He appears in quite a few um, Lovecraft books. So you, uh, Martin Baker, is walking back through these rows of books. Very dark in here. A lot of shadows cast from that single light on the steps. As you get closer, you see at the top of the steps, there's a figure up there, a very, very large figure. You continue or do anything else? Um, I would, I, so I'm standing at the bottom of the stairs, you said? Yes. 
Yeah, yeah you're I'm coming through those rows of bookshelves. And, large figure. Yes, mm -hmm. at least seven feet tall from what you can tell. At least seven feet tall. Is is Dr. Armitage known to be a Dr. rather Armitage tall man? Is, uh, no, he's a, he's a short, rather old man. I would, uh, I would call out, uh, excuse, excuse me there, uh, is Dr. Armitage up there? The figure starts coming down the stairs, and you see that it's a woman of immense proportions. As I said, standing excuse at you. least seven feet tall. <laughs> Her musculature oh. is barely concealed oh. by the well-tailored ta suit that she's wearing. And uh, she stops about halfway down the stairs and just motions for you to come up the stairs. I, I, I would, I would be dumbstruck for just a moment, uh, being a, you know, a, a warrior myself. Seeing warrior women has a, has that kind of an effect. Um, You're sure that her I, I fist would, would be the size was, of your head. No but that's cool, man. Whatever. Hey, man. To each, each their own. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just let me be. All right. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> so what does Professor Baker do I, after he I, uh, snaps out of that? I I would oh ex excuse me, lovely lady. I uh, I I don't think I've ever seen you around here before. Um, you'll you'll have to forgive me. I I was I've never been so struck by a woman of your grace. Uh, my name is Martin Baker. How are you? She doesn't react. Kind of stares at you blankly. Waits to see what you're gonna do for a second, and then turns around and starts walking back up the steps. I watch her walk up the steps, <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, roll a spot and then I, I, I guess. Ooh. Oh no! <laughs> All right, let me pop that chat up. I don't there. know. Oh, there it is. Here we go. Nice, close. Barely. Barely. But uh, what what Professor Baker realizes is, uh, as she starts to turn and walk away, and you're taking a closer look at her, I guess her flesh is reminiscent of pale alabaster, unnaturally smooth. No visible wrinkles, pores, hairs, or variations of color. And in addition to this, you notice that the short bob cut that's on her head is a wig continues up the stairs and at the top turns right so you're, you're telling me that she she wouldn't like badmouth me or talk down to me she's just she's just kind of statuesque a little bit right this is like the perfect woman uh yeah so i would i i'd kind of this would obviously push its way out of uh, or push the butu out of my head just a little bit um i'd follow her up then and uh I'd still, I'd still try to chat, chat at her a little bit to see if I could get her to talk, um, or it, or whatever she might be. Because I'm, I am, I'm a fairly large man myself. I mean, I'm not quite the boil large. What, what's boil strength? I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, um, we should remember. He said it so much. <laughs> I know. Maybe he's uh, in but chat. I am, he can I tell am us. size, size sixty five. See, I'm seventy. And I'm 70 on size, so I'm not a small man, you know. I'm a I'm a I'm a, I'm a muscular kind of guy. Uh, so you know, just kind of like try to catch up with her a little bit and like look a little bit, see if I could kind of squint at those pores, you know, like that or the lack thereof, and say, well, "Where where have you been hiding? I haven't seen you before." She still doesn't react, and you're you're able to catch up her up to her just fine with her, um, you know, thudding booms from her footsteps easy to find down the hallway there uh, but eventually you come to uh, Dr. Armitage's door she still has said nothing the entire time she stands next to the door looks at you looks at the door and nods so I would I would look at her and I'd kind of sly smile just a little bit be like woman a few words huh okay well um, hopefully I'll see you around here uh, but uh Thank you for the escort over here. And then I would uh, knock politely on the door. There's an answer behind it. Come in. Open up the door, walk in, and I'm kind of, now things are changing a little bit, right? And straightening it up, straightening up my vest, kind of 
making sure I don't have blood all over me or anything. Um, just my glasses. You know, I don't have the the luxurious Sev stash, but um, you know my character <laughs> does. So I adjust that very quickly and kind of you know suck in my gut a little bit, straighten up the back. So as I walk in. All right, and when you walk in, the door opens, unlocked, and behind the desk is definitely not Dr. Armitage. Instead, there's a slender, dark-skinned man with a serious, clean-shaven face and short hair starting to show patches of gray. And I would go like this Come at the in. door. Come really in, Mr. To... Mr. Baker. I'd do one of these at the door to make sure that it says Dr. Armitage on the door. Uh, does it? It does, yes. Okay. Uh, uh, yes! Yes, I am. Uh, Professor Baker. Uh, you, you'll forgive me. My uh, there, There is no doctorate for the, the, the work that I do, but um, I don't believe you and I have met either. This has been a very interesting night. Uh, who, and who are you? I am Albert Regardi. I'm sure you have many questions. Why don't you please come and have a seat? Okay. I, well, I appreciate the, uh, the, the the gesture. I will do so. And so I sit down and kind of have my back, back a little erect, kind of like I, I'm... There's definitely a different feeling now. Before I was going into trying to muster every ounce of professionalism that I possibly could and with respect to uh, Dr. Armitage, but now this stranger's in here, so I, I'm a little bit more on the alert side. This is more of a uh, spring that's been compressed versus a, you know, a, a gentleman that's coming in and trying to be, you know, um, impressive to another person. Okay. So he waits for you to sit down before he continues speaking. Professor Baker. As I said, I'm sure you have many questions, and I'm here to answer all of those. I want to assure you that um, your colleagues have the information they need to carry on with what they're doing to And if you're curious about myself, for lack of better words, I am Dr. Armitage's assistant. He's currently out on an expedition and has asked me to pull you in and have a discussion. Very good. Um, but first, I, I, uh, Professor please. Baker, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but let me tell you a little bit of a story about a battalion of American soldiers in France. You see, we came to have knowledge of a, a cult operating a certain region of France. I won't bore you with the details. However, they succeeded in accomplishing a task that uh, most men wouldn't believe possible. They summoned, force, summoned forth a, a being from another team. Shuffling out of the darkness that they opened was the blasphemous thing, not holy ape and not holy insect. Professor Baker, I think you can tell me about that, that creature. Because we've done some digging and it turns out you were one of the survivors. Well, I, I think you might have your, your stories mixed up then because you said American soldiers, correct? Um, I wasn't a soldier, I was a Marine. Of course, of course. I, I apologize for the, uh, the misuse of terminology. I, I understand. I. It's very interesting that you you hear that story as one of the uh, the only people that supposedly, supposedly exited this place after that happened. Uh, you think there's very few people who would know about that? Well, I believe we can drop all facades here. And as I said, I've been watching you for quite some time now. Since you came to this university, I was assigned to do so by Dr. Armitage. And as I said, he was on an expedition currently, and such expeditions lead to 
information about such cults and their goings on. And now what I well, ask of you, Professor Baker, is to allow us to take in the journal that you have, that tome that you procured from that ritual. And I'm sure you are expecting something in return. So with that, I, we will allow you to have access to the secret library here. So we 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 you say we are we're dropping all pretenses. Of course. Correct. Then uh, then I I would be remiss if I didn't drop all pretenses with you. Um, I know what's in that journal. I know what it can be used for. It's I seen the things that came out of the portal that was opened by those people, and it's my life now to ensure that I stop whatever small flow of this malevolent things that I can. I know it's like a, you know stopping a single drop of water in an ocean of you know death, but it's something. And so that means that I know what's in this book. I know what it can be used for. And if it's used for that, I would be coming for those who used it. Do you catch my drift, or do I need to be a little bit more plain? Of course, Professor Baker, your, your point has been made. And please understand that we wish to work with you, and our goals are the one and the same. Then, of, as a uh, representative of Doc... Of, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, of uh, Dr. Armitage. Um, I would be remiss if I if I didn't help you. I before I just out of character real quick, I would like to, if possible, you know, understand if this person's feeding me a load of shit or um, Yeah, you know, I'm glad you asked that because that <laughs> role was coming up. Yes, you can go ahead and make a psychology role. Um, and you can add advantage to that because, uh, let's see, who did that? Kyle? Yeah. Freaking uh, Mr. Alpha Wolf, Alpha Wolf Zero. Zero. The one I was just talking shit about in our Discord. <laughs> I'm sorry, Kyle. I love you. You are the best. You're the most handsome. Um, you, uh, you light up my life. You are the wind beneath my wings. Um, I don't, I don't know what else. <laughs> I wish I, I'm going to find you and cut off your face and wear it because you're so handsome. All right, psychology said? Yes. With a bonus die. Yeah, advantage. Oh, fuck you. Did you roll advantage on that? Yeah, I did. Oh, yeah, it did. Okay. It yeah. didn't show me at All first. Right, uh, oh, by the way, you got the roll thing up. I want to I wanna push that if I can. Yeah. Wait, yeah, you is can this push aliens? <laughs> yeah, I'll push it. Yeah. <laughs> Do I have just, to take a just stress? Just realize, um, no, no stress. Just realize before you roll it that um, in this sort of situation, because there's no real immediate threat here for me to kind of turn on you if the, the roll goes bad, what will happen is um, most likely he'll realize that you're examining him here. That's fine. I want him to know. I want him to know. Um. I figured whatever if I if I fail this again, I'm just going to be like, yeah, man, here's the book. Let me tell you, here's my transcriptions of it in Latin. You know, like, <laughs> so. yeah. Ooh, nice. All right. Thanks, um, Kyle. So he was not lying, as far as you can tell about. Um, when he said that your goals are the same. However, you feel like there is maybe a little bit that he's holding back, and some of it he might have been getting towards telling you, though. Okay. Well, then, um, I would uh, definitely prompt him and say, well, if... Uh... Sorry, one second. Was it was it Mr. or Dr. Regarde? Apologies. He just called himself Albert Regarde. That's what I'm asking him. 
I'm asking him. Is it is it Doctor? Oh, or in Mr. character again. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I go by many titles, but you are free to call me Albert. Then please call me Martin. Uh, I, I uh. I believe that we are working towards the same goal. Do you... I feel like you have more to tell me, though. Yes. With all of this and your access to the library, there is a condition. Hmm. These expeditions require people. Certain types of people, and I'm sure you understand why. Yes. We would expect yes, you to be dispatched, in a sense, to uh, various locations under Dr. Armitage. And you are free to assemble your own team. I would, in fact, expect you to, to, to do so. From what I understand, you have a few colleagues that are informed, as we are. Yes, that is, that is, that is the case. Um... And I, I completely understand the this set of conditions and why there are people that are necessary uh, that have a certain ability. And I imagine the reason why I was picked for this is because of my past and the ability to actually follow orders and take command. So um, I completely understand. And I do have several um, compatriots that would be good for these types of things. I'm, I'm actually hoping that... Um, a friend of mine uh, who's done a little bit of private eye work might show up here soon again. I know that the, the university uh, has called on him a time or two, so hopefully he can join us again. Very well, it sounds like you have your team assembled already. Is there any further questions you would like to ask me before we proceed? And I'd like to point out at this point that um, because of that psychology role you did, it was very good, and like I said, it felt like there was something he was going to tell you, but you do still feel like there's some things he's holding back, but um, you have you intuitively feel that he won't ex elaborate on. There's something you know <clears throat> of this magnitude. He he probably needs to get your trust a little. Of course, feel free, free to try. <laughs> right. Um, so. I would I would say I'd kind of lean back a little bit and I'm relaxing a little bit although I glance over my shoulder to see if the alabaster woman's coming to break my neck or not um <laughs> and uh I mean I if, if you gotta go you know that's the way but uh I would I would ask him do you know you, you seem to have knowledge <laughs> as an understatement um do you know what's going on down at the meatpacking plant here? I know that there is an amateur magician there draining the blood of Ib to still. Uh, this is what is known as the Black. I'm sure you're familiar with it by now. The name, the name, the Black is familiar. The name Yib to still also rings a bell but i i don't know anything beyond that it's it has something to do with these other worldly beings other than that i don't know anything about him or her or it or whatever i would say it's uh not worth the time to try and apply gender to such things however can read much more about you still in the library one of many beings among us. I didn't think that we there was only one or two. I uh do you know where this magician got his abilities from? You seem to know where I had my first run in. Do you know where this magician got his? His father, who was also a magician. In fact his father went mad and ended up Accidentally, accidentally killing himself through ritual. Is anything being done about this? 
I believe your team is already on the case. So you say magician. I I have learned to use a series of words that I learned in a, one of the books. Is this is this what you're is, are these people able to use this power? Is that what you're referring to? Yes. Yes, that that is the case and this is new information to me. Used such abilities? I did. Inside of that meat packing plant, it was the first time that I tried to use it in anger. It's that very is, difficult to control. It is truly remarkable. Incredibly risky. I could feel a pull on my mind as I used it. It felt as if there was as if there was tendrils reaching into my mind as I used the power to basically almost fuel it. It was very strange. And then it felt as if I was using my own I'm not going to say soul, but my my own life energy in order to use it. It was very it was very strange, but it was effective. The beings that usually these sort of Abilities. They uh, they have other faculties that protect them from such a backlash. Human beings are not really meant; they're built in such a fashion, and must uh, you, you must be very wise about when you decide to use. Them. Did you? <coughs> as, as I begin to talk about it, it starts to come up again. Did you study anything that happened over in the theater of war overseas? Did you study much about the battles? I have some information about such things, but I don't believe now is the time or place I could discuss for hours. I'm not, I'm not referring to I'm not referring to I'm, I'm merely making a point. I'm not referring to the occult. I'm not referring to whatever this other stuff is. I'm asking you, do you know how wars are fought? Are you asking, Martin, if these magics are used by warmongers? No, I'm telling you that while I was over there, there was a place uh, called Yiper Belgium, or Ypres Belgium, depending on what your accent you're using. The, the Germans released a green gas that flooded over the trenches and suffocated those who were inside of it. They had no idea what to do about it. And then it evolved from there. I was attacked with an agent that they call Mustard. I, I'm racked by coughs. I, it, it hurts to breathe. Both sides use it. When one side uses it, the other side uses it. If these creatures are able to use this type of power, then it's up to us, those who can step forth and do battle with them, to use the power as well. Glad that we agree on this subject, Martin. Is there any other questions you might have at the moment I, before I show you the secret library itself? I'm, I'm starting to get a little excited to see the library, but I do have one more question. Your, uh, your friend out there, where did you find her? Judith, she is the product of magic. She is a golem. Are you familiar with the term? The, the created beings, I believe, by the Jews, if I recall correctly. Um, that was their, their term that they used for um, constructs that they would make to protect their people in their sacred places. That is exactly correct. 
Fifth is a construct created Jewish bull. That's 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 a shame. <laughs> not not for not for. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, Martin wouldn't be laughing. I just hold on. I need a second. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. The joke's too inappropriate to stream. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, I, I, Martin would nod his head and um, I, I'd say and would say, "Well, that's that's a shame that she's not a a living person because." Wow. Anyways, um, it's it's interesting to know that there are others out there that can use these powers. I've only seen these powers used for evil purposes. It is both comforting and terrifying to know that others this, as you've seen, can go in a horrifying direction and warp the mind. Then it's up to us to stop those individuals with the same. I agree. And with that, he stands up and he, he waves for Judith to come in uh, and he goes to a bookshelf nearby and pulls out a book and behind it reaches and pulls on a lever. The bookshelf swings open and reveals a set of stairs that he begins to walk down. Judith waits for you to step down. There. So I would, I would step forth and I'd, I'd look to Judith and be like, we could have been special. We could have been something. And then I would hurry up and mosey on down. <laughs> All right. Um, so Judith steps in behind you and closes the shelf, follows you down. <gasps> Ooh. <laughs> At the bottom of the steps, and these steps are quite long. You're sure that you went below the library. You eventually come to a very large vault door in a rather small room. The entire wall in front of you is this vault covered in all sorts of sigils and runes that a lot of them you've never seen before. You stare at some of them long enough, they might hurt your eyes a little bit or appear to give off a faint glow. Albert walks up to the, the vault door and puts in a certain combination with the, uh, the lock there also pulls out a key on a second door behind that vault door and unlocks that before opening it and stepping through. Assuming Martin is quick to follow. Oh oh yeah, we didn't we didn't come all this way for nothing. Yeah. And of course there's also candelabra on either side of the, the small room that you're in. They're lit, but they don't oh, seem I'll to actually be that. giving off any heat. I would so, I would I would do the the this thing, right? You got the yeah. There, there's no heat coming off of them. So. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. So you continue into into this vault, and inside it opens up quite a bit. It's not as vast as the library upstairs, but it's much more impressive. The things sitting on these shelves are just ancient, and it's it's everything you've been looking for as far as your it seems. There's a num there's a series of nice wood tables in the in the middle of all of these bookshelves, very well kept in here. A lot of there's relics or books are in glass enclosures. Those that are you know, really prone to. Albert, do they have the stands there and just there waves his his hand? They're kind of covered the and have the the tweezers to be able to open them like that kind of like yeah. that museum exhibit sort of stuff for yeah the more fragile ones uh and albert stands there and kind of waits to see your reaction as you're standing in the middle of the miskatonic university's secret library so i would i would be looking around and i would definitely be dumbstruck i would close my eyes for a minute and take in a deep breath to just smell that they're you can feel the power there. And I would stop and I would think for a minute and I would nod my head and I would open up my eyes and, and say aloud that 
it is right that this place is so guarded and not everyone's allowed here. Albert nods. Of course, that is absolutely the amount of power contained here is rather staggering. And also, as you looked around the room, you noticed that the, at the corners of all of the walls, there heavy, very heavy gauge metal stripping. This is a very secure vault, and all of the metal everywhere you can see has all sorts of sigils and inscribed on it. And that's really the main things I wanted to get through there. So if you've got nothing, if there's anything else, you can continue to talk to Albert if you'd like, or, or look around, that's completely fine. Um, otherwise, we can talk no, a little I... bit about downtime and, and what Martin does before the city tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I wouldn't want to bother Albert too much. Um, I'd be making some mental notes in my head to, to continue to try and talk with him as time goes by. Um, and I would, I would begin perusing immediately. Um, I'd stay away from the relics, uh, just because I don't know what touching them would cause and what they can do. And I'm definitely not going to be able to walk out with one of those. Um, but the, the books, the books would be of interest. Um, in particular, anything that I can end up getting a hold of that's been translated into Latin or, you know, obviously very, very nice would be English, but Latin is a second language that I know. So, okay. Um, and is there any certain, I guess, key terms or, or ideas that, uh, are in searching? Well, so I think I think to begin with, one of the things I would be doing is just kind of walking around the area and looking at the sigils that are there for protection, right? Because Martin believes, you know, after using that power to kind of try and be offensive with it, I, I think that, and it didn't go wonderfully, right? Hitting those things with a, a trench club and shooting them and lighting them on fire seems to be good. Um, granted, that won't work against Cthulhu, but we don't know that right now. Um, <laughs> the idea of protection seems to be more important, right? Protection and removal, because we already seen um, with uh, <laughs> the the bear worms, right? Yeah. Right, Nate, the bear worms, um, that these things can be summoned and they can be dismissed. Yes. So. Um, the idea would, for Martin would be first to kind of look at the sigils on the wall, see if there's any commonalities amongst them. If there is, then that's going to be a something to look for in the books. If not, then we're looking for things that talk about protection of banishments of, of things like that. Okay. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I would say that we're going to be able to get Martin a spell of some sort during the downtime okay. so keeping that in mind um, I'm not going to you know, look through all the spells right now yeah 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 but um, before the session tomorrow we can get Martin hooked up with a new spell after all of that research I'll send you a couple and you can pick if you want we can, I've already kind of looked at some okay um, but aside from that uh, Let's also quickly touch on any uh, beings, deities, any entities that Martin would might want to look up, aside from the spells. Um, I lost his name. Anum Shabai. <laughs> I can't remember how to say it. Say it Yib, for me. Yib to still. Yib to still. Yeah. Here, let me let me throw that in the chat real quick. Thanks. I'm I'm putting it in the, the Twitch chat. Gotcha. I, I would also kind of be looking to see if there's any... I, I guess whenever I'm looking for this stuff is names... Oh, my spell was worn off. <laughs> uh, any, any names that are common. So, you know, like if we're starting to see Azizoth a lot, you know, like that would be kind of trying trying to improve that mythos knowledge a little bit and yeah. understand the beings that are out there 
Okay. Um, so yeah, you, you definitely find information about Yib to still. Um, let's see, what, what's a little bit that you learn here? So, Yib to still seems to have some sort of domain over time and space. From what you've read, it appears that he has the ability to send objects or entities across time and space. In ancient times, he's worshipped as the god Yib. And, of course, you find a lot of information about the black, which is that same substance that the magician was um, uh, summoning up for that drug that was being sold. The last thing you find is that Gibstis, Gib is still, I'm in trouble saying it now, seems to, according to some sources, exist in the jungle of Kled, which is in Earth's dreamland. Interesting. So it looks like you've got a little bit more to go on there for further research. Yep. So, um, I guess that about wraps it up. If there's anything else you'd like to add, though, for your character downtime, we can discuss anything like that real quick. Um, I'm assuming he'll just be researching most of the time and oh, also yeah. filling He's... in his colleagues on what happened to some extent. I mean, but... he might be filling in his colleagues if, if he ever leaves the, the basement, you know? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, we would definitely be spending a ton of time down there trying to translate things over, definitely grabbing a couple of new um, books and copying things over and leaving them there, right? There's they're not walking out with them, um, going through and doing all this stuff. Um, the only time... He'd probably leave two different times aside from to eat and, you know, do the bodilies unless there's, you know, a, a, a bucket down there to crap in. Although I don't I don't think I want Judith carrying my stuff up and down. You know, I, I'm still kind of in love. Um, you know, al Alabaster, seven foot tall, Golem, you know, they turned me on. So um, <laughs> is uh, the um, first I would leave probably within an hour of going down there. Um, to go check on my compatriots, um, find out what happened, um, tell them that, and, and start kind of making mention that it's like, hey, um, I've already kind of pledged myself to help with these things that we keep running into. Um, I would like to be able to count you as part of the team if possible. If not, I completely understand. Um, I, there's no shame in that. Um, but understand that I, I need help. Um, and then the only other time <clears throat> would be to, um, go up and check on, I can't remember Anthony's character's name, um, because uh, William Edwards, he's probably about the age that I was whenever I first ran into all this stuff, uh, to make sure that he's not, and we already seen one kid commit suicide and a bunch of other stuff happening. So check on the kid to make sure he's not you know hurting too bad um other than that i would be spending all of the time down there prepping okay and yeah we can uh we'll definitely go over some of those interactions tomorrow when we get started and how the party dynamic what what happens during that downtime of a, a couple months scenario with the black and what we'll be playing tomorrow Sounds good. Yep. All right. I, I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to go through for this little side adventure of Professor Martin Baker. I have one thing, one more thing. Sure. I would just like to say thank you for taking the time to do this side thing instead of just saying, oh, yeah, you can have whatever, blah, 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 blah. So <laughs> that speaks highly of you as a GM, and you are a credit to our channel. So thank you very much. Thank you. I, I really appreciate that. It, I mean, this was a, a lot of fun to do. I definitely got some benefit out of it, too. <laughs> Good. All right. Katie said we should just kiss already. 
I mean, if we weren't in COVID, the country, I, though. I, I, if you're, I, if not even that, I'd be driving out right now. If we weren't in COVID, I'd be there. Yeah, yeah. Don't be jealous. So, um, let's, uh, let's check out a, a raid real quick. Um, anyone up? Is Diesel Shot still going? I think Diesel Shot's still going. Yeah, they are. Let's, let's, uh, raid Diesel Shot. Like I like how Hades is all mad. Don't be jealous, Hades. Get on a game and start playing again, and maybe maybe I'll want to kiss you too. <laughs> all right. Uh, thank you, everyone, that tuned in. Hope it was enjoyable. We're going to raid Diesel Shot, so stick around for that. Thanks again. See ya. Bye. You like to say anything? <laughs> no, nope, I love you. Bye. I love you, Hades. <laughs>